Welcome to part 4 of Kinetics Review. This material will focus on deducing a zero order rate law given concentration time data. Before we begin, it is worth mentioning that the student should have first viewed parts 1 through 3 of this review to gain more from this and subsequent sections. In this introductory video, we will again examine reactions with only one reactant. Otherwise, pseudo order techniques need to be introduced and they will not be discussed here. Okay. So a rate implies a ratio. The ratio for a chemical reaction is either a loss of reactant per time or the formation of a product per time. The loss of reactant per time can be equated to the zero order rate law, where n equals zero. The change of A over the change of T is the average rate of reaction, but we want to examine the instantaneous rate of reaction. So we introduce dA over dT. Now we have a differential equation we can solve with a little calculus and produce a function, which will be the concentration as a function of time. Before integration, we simplify and rearrange, introduce our integral, which is from initial concentration to concentration at some time t, and time from zero to some time t. Pull our constant out of the integral, and after integration, we get an integrated zero order rate law which upon rearrangement yields a very useful form of the integrated rate law. Looking closer at equation 6, we see it is a linear equation, where a plot of time on the x-axis versus concentration of A on the y-axis will give a straight line. So let's examine time concentration data for the decomposition of ammonia, NH3. If we plot the concentration of NH3 versus time, we should generate a straight line if the reaction follows zero order kinetics, which it does. So how would we see this data in a word problem? In this example problem, we are asked to deduce the order of this reaction and what is the rate constant. We have learned that if a reaction follows zero order kinetics, then it should give a straight line plot employing the integrated zero order rate law where a plot of the concentration of NH3 versus time will be a straight line. Conversely, if a straight line is not obtained, one would have proven it is not zero order. Alternatively, we could examine the slope of the first two and last two data points and see if they are equal. Calculating their slopes, we see they are equal. Thus, we have proven this reaction follows zero order kinetics. Calculating the slope using the first and last data points affords the rate constant as shown. Note that the negative of the slope affords a positive rate constant. However, what if your assumption was that the reaction followed first order kinetics? Recall, if the reaction is first order, it will follow the linearized form of the integrated first order rate law, where a plot of the natural log of NH3 concentrations versus time will be a straight line. Conversely, if a straight line is not obtained, one would have proven it is not first order. The first step would be to take the natural log of the concentrations and plot natural log of NH3 concentrations versus time as shown. A straight line is not obtained, thus this reaction does not follow first order kinetics. Well, what if your assumption was that the reaction followed second-order kinetics? Recall, if the reaction is second-order, it will follow the linearized form of the integrated second-order rate law. The first step would be to make a new column of 1 over the concentrations and plot 1 over the concentrations of NH3 versus time as shown. A straight line is not obtained, thus this reaction does not follow second-order kinetics. But it takes a lot of work converting all of the concentration data and then entering all of it into a graphing calculator. Thus, one could simply calculate the slope of the first two and last two data points, and if they are not equal, then one has proven the data is not a straight line, and eliminate the possibility of first or second order kinetics for the decomposition of NH3. Another type of question that could be asked is, well, what will the concentration of NH3 be at some time t? In this example, we already know the reaction is zero order and therefore will follow the zero order linearized equation. 
And we have already demonstrated that the plot of NH3 versus time will produce a straight line. Thus, we can use this straight line to extrapolate out to 525 seconds to determine the concentration of NH3. Plugging the initial concentration as well as time, 525 seconds, we see that the rate constant is required. So, calculating the slope using the first and last data points affords the rate constant as shown. Note that the negative of the slope affords a positive rate constant. Employing this calculated rate constant will yield the concentration of NH3 at 525 seconds. The second part of this question is another common query. How much time needs to pass for the reaction to be X percent complete? So the key here is to recognize that if the reaction is 95% complete, then 5% remains. Thus, 5% of the initial concentration is 0 0.10 molar. Using these values, we realize we need the rate constant, which has been previously calculated, and is substituted into the equation to yield the time required for the reaction to be 95% complete. Another common question pertains to half-lives. To calculate the half-life for a zero-order reaction, we start with the integrated zero-order equation. Then, making some substitutions, T1 half for T, and understanding that the concentration of A at the half-life will be half the initial concentration of A, yields equation two, which can be simplified and rearranged to yield our half-life equation. Interestingly, the half-life equation has a dependency on concentration, and we will see its effect in a moment. But first, to calculate the half-life, we will once again need the rate constant. Calculating the slope using the first and last data points affords the slope as shown. Note that the negative of the slope affords a positive rate constant for zero-order reactions. So let's calculate the first half-life with an initial concentration of 2 molar. Substituting the rate constant and initial concentration into our half-life equation indicates that 294 seconds need to pass for the concentration to go from 2 molar to half that concentration. Now let's calculate the second half-life, which now has half the initial concentration, and we see that the second half-life is half the first. To calculate the third half-life, we use half of the concentration again, and we see that the third half-life has been halved yet again, which repeats on and on and on. In summary, for zero-order reactions, we limited our discussion to one reactant. We were able to derive with a little calculus a function, which is the concentration as a function of time, or the integrated rate law, shown here that is a straight line. We also derive the half-life equation for zero-order kinetics, and the plot of the concentration of A versus time gave a straight line with a slope that allowed us to deduce a rate constant. Then we examined different types of questions that could be asked of the student. For example, given concentration time data, prove the reaction follows zero-order kinetics. Recognizing that the zero-order integrated rate law is a straight line if we plot the concentration of A versus time. For example, for the decomposition of ammonia, if the subsequent plot of the concentration of NH3 versus T is a straight line, then zero-order kinetics for the reaction is observed. Alternatively, and more rapidly, we could examine the first two and last two data points to see if their slopes matched. If they had the same slope, which is the definition of a straight line, then again, zero-order kinetics is observed or proven. Conversely, this same technique can be used to disprove zero-order kinetics. Another important skill is to deduce the rate constant, which is the negative of the slope for a zero-order reaction. The rate constant is often needed for subsequent types of questions. Another skill is to deduce concentration of reactant at some time t. Using the linearized integrated zero-order equation, we realize we need the rate constant, the time, and the initial concentration to solve for the concentration of A at some time t. 
When all of these values are known, the concentration can be deduced at any time t with a little algebra. A student could also be asked for the half-life, the amount of time required to pass for the reactant concentration to be halved. Starting from the previously derived zero-order equation and making some substitutions, the half-life equation was easily obtained. Interestingly, each subsequent half-life is halved because of the concentration dependency. To demonstrate this, let's use the following rate constant and an initial concentration of 2 molar to calculate the half-life. Next, let's calculate the second half-life, which now has half of the initial concentration, and we see that the second half-life is half the first. Again, using half the concentration for the third half-life calculation, we see the third half-life has been halved yet again. Another common question is, how much time needs to pass for the reaction to be X percent complete? For example, 95 percent complete. The key here is to recognize that if the reaction is X percent complete, then 100 minus X percent remains. Thus, if the reaction is 95% complete, then 5% remains, and 5% of the initial concentration would be 0 0.10 molar. Using these values within the integrated rate law with the rate constant, which is the negative of the slope, will yield the time required to pass for the reaction to be 95% complete, which is almost 600 seconds.